I didn't watch that much of CPAC this year because I decided to practice self-love. But I do have some highlights for you because I know that you probably wouldn't subject yourself to that torture as well. But before we get started, I just want to kind of give you CPAC in a nutshell. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all domestic terrorists. True. <laughs> okay, let's get to some highlights here. The first is um, Donald Trump, who is introducing a swimmer. Her name is, uh, what was it? Riley Gaines. So he um, is going to hit on Riley Gaines. You know, he's very clearly interested in her. She thinks that she's attractive. And take a look at the way that he uh, welcomes her to the stage. Crazy. It was the largest applause I've ever heard. Come on up here. Look at this. Look at this. I'm going to come. Just stop touching people. I mean, you could introduce someone and not actually like give them a hug or something like some, like maybe I'm, I'm a weirdo, right? Because I don't like being hugged. I don't want people to touch me. That's just the way that I am. It's my personality. It's my preference, right? And I think that some people who are more touchy feely, they think that because they prefer hugs and, you know, affection that other people feel the same way. I promise you they don't feel the same way. But in this instance, Donald Trump, you know, He's attracted to her. She's a young woman. And as a creep, he wants to give her a kiss because he wants to get as close to her as he possibly can because we all know Donald Trump's history with young women. Now, the problem is that she wasn't feeling it. And that led to that very awkward exchange there. But somebody who was interested in Donald Trump presumably hitting on them was a GOP congressman and former White House doctor, Ronnie Jackson. Look at the way that Donald Trump introduced him. A man that knows me almost better than any human being... He knows every inch of me. <laughs> and he thinks it's actually a very beautiful sight. That's why I like it. Okay. Now there's more. Ronnie Jackson, my doctor. Dr. Ronnie. Where's Ronnie? Where's Ronnie? Oh. He was the White House doctor. He was a great doctor. You know, he was an admiral, a doctor, and now he's a congressman. I said, which is the best? Have you had your choice? And he sort of indicated doctor because he loved looking at my body. It was so strong and powerful. The visual is so disturbing that it actually makes me want to be straight. Like it makes me want to leave my homosexual lifestyle and become straight because the thought of Trump with another man honestly is so nauseating that it makes me repulsed. Um, it just, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sorry that you had to get that visual, but perhaps more disturbing even than that visual is the performance art by Walk Away founder and grifter Brandon Schraka. So on the second day of CPAC in Exhibition Hall, he pretended to cry all day uh, and was behind bars with a MAGA hat. And then things somehow got even more bizarre when Marjorie Taylor Greene showed up. And um, it led to this moment captured by people on TikTok. You care about freedom? Back up. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, we trust in you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits release this bondage that's going on in our country and upon Brandon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You motherfuckers are extremely weird. You know this, right? You know how weird you look to sane people? You know this, right? I, I just, I, I can't get over that. What was that? You know that he's not really in prison, right? It's an art piece. And yet they're all praying over him, chanting like fucking cult members it, it, how do you even characterize that like show this to people in other countries show this to like the average person in denmark 
and their head would explode. They wouldn't know what to think of it. Yes, we've all been accustomed to this sort of insanity and cult-like behavior from conservatives in the United States, but still, like, being accustomed to it, being surrounded by it, having family members who are part of this dumb fuck movement, I still can't not be perplexed when I see shit like that. It's just, it's so weird. Now, speaking of this performance piece, I've got to show you this picture of Marjorie Green holding his hand and walking away. I mean, look at his face, dude. <laughs> What the fuck? Look at his face. I can't with these people. I cannot handle these fucking people. I swear to God, they are absolute psychopaths. These people are freaks. Now, he was absolutely triggered that people were making fun of him for this obviously stupid and cringeworthy over-the-top performance uh, that he took to Twitter. He says this, At CPAC, I sat silently in a cell as a performance art piece to provoke a reaction about political division, human rights abuses, and more. Right now, the left-wing media is actively trying to use this art piece to have me further prosecuted. The left now supports criminalizing art. Hmm. See, I've never actually supported criminalizing art, but you single-handedly might get me to reverse that position because that's so fucking intolerable and insufferable and cringeworthy that perhaps that should be illegal. And I love how he's trying to shine a light on uh, human rights abuses. I mean, in the event you were going to come before a large crowd of people and you wanted to make a political point uh, specifically about human rights abuses, what would you choose? Like if you're a leftist, maybe you talk about how tens of thousands of people die every single year in the United States because they don't have health care. Perhaps you talk about the genocide in Yemen being carried out by our ally, Saudi Arabia. Perhaps you talk about apartheid that Israel is doing to uh, Palestinians. He chose to talk about himself. Why? Because he chose to storm the capital and got prosecuted because of it. And so now he's making it like this political art piece that he's the victim. And now he's further victimized because people are making fun of him for being cringeworthy. I mean, just take the fucking L. Just take the L, dude. You're corny. It's dumb. You might have MAGA cultists and religious fundamentalists really excited to see you do whatever that was, but normal people look at that and they think that it's batshit fucking insane. The fact that you don't realize that, the fact that you lack the self-awareness to acknowledge how normal people view you, that's on you, not on all of us. Now, you know, besides the cringeworthy performative elements of CPAC, I did want to get to some substance, and we're really being charitable by using that word because I want to highlight Rick Scott's speech. And the reason why this speech in particular stood out to me was because of how fascistic it was in creating this enemy for the right to go after. And when I say enemy, I mean you, the left. We survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, World War One and Two, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War. But now, today, we face the greatest danger we have ever faced. The militant left wing in our country has become the enemy within. The woke left now controls the Democrat Party, the entire federal government, the news media, academia, big tech, Hollywood, most corporate boardrooms, and now even some of our top military leaders. They are working hard to redefine our country, silence their opponents, and that means each of you. They're destroying about just everything they touch, and they've got their hands on everything. Here's the thing about what they're trying to destroy. American patriotism, border security, American history, gender, traditional morality, capitalism, fiscal responsibility, opportunity, rugged individualism, Judeo-Christian values, free speech, law enforcement, religious liberty, parental involvement in schools, and even private ownership of firearms. The woke left wants all of that gone. They want to end the American experiment. They want to replace freedom with their control. The elites in the government are telling us what we can and cannot believe, what we can think and what we can do. They want to completely control our lives. Woke government-run schools, woke government-run healthcare, woke government-run media, woke government-run everything. In their new socialist order, everyone will obey and no one will be allowed to complain. If you do speak up, boom, you're gonna be canceled. Your views, if you don't conform with big tech, Fauci or Neil Young, 
You're going to be taken off Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. What a very normal speech for a sitting United States senator to give. Now, look, before I even talk about what he said there, I just want to make it abundantly clear that I don't believe that he believes the words that he's saying. I think that he's being purposefully dishonest and just trying to, you know, get the crowd riled up, throw red meat to the GOP base. But he knows that everything there is projection, especially the talk of, uh, you know, the left posing this threat to democracy. Need I remind you that the GOP itself, their last president, staged an insurrection. On top of that, the far-right Supreme Court may actually subvert democracy by allowing state legislatures to enact state legislature theory to just let states choose who the next presidential electors are. It's fake elector scheme on steroids, not even allowing the voters of their state to make their voices heard. But that's not all, because you have RNC officials training Stop the Steal conspiracy theorists to become poll workers, and you have GOP politicians across the country refusing to certify the results of elections. So for all this talk about democracy and how the left is a threat to it, it's not just projection. It's meant to distract people from the very real and present danger that the GOP poses to democracy itself. He knows this. He knows that normal Americans see the threat that Republicans pose to democracy. So he's trying to say, actually, look over there. They're the real threat. When the actual examples that he provides us with are fucking laughable. He says that um, they want to completely control our lives. Woke government run schools. Woke government run healthcare. I wonder what that looks like. Woke government run healthcare. Love these buzzwords here. Um, and the example that he gives is Neil Young choosing by himself to take his music off of Spotify to protest Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. That's an example of the left militant mob controlling your free speech when somebody chooses on their own accord to remove their music from a particular platform. That sounds kind of dumb, 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 dumb. But he also says here, we survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, uh, World War One and Two, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War. But today we face the greatest danger we've ever faced, the militant left wing. So he is quite literally conflating left wingers in America who want health care and education and greater democracy with Nazis. I mean, does that sound like a serious person? As much as I say that Republicans like Rick Scott are fascists, I still acknowledge that they are not as harmful or dangerous to democracy as fucking Nazis. But yet, in his view, the left, they're worse than Nazis. They're a greater threat than Nazis. Yeah. And one thing that I've got to point out, which I've mentioned before, but Hungarian uh, prime minister and wannabe dictator Viktor Orban was invited to speak even after he gave a pure Nazi speech where he condemned race mixing. And he got a standing ovation at CPAC after condemning marriage equality. So, yeah, that's CPAC 2022. Is it more deranged than last year? Yeah. But will the following year be even worse than this year? Yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty uh, good prediction if you were to make that. These uh, Republicans and conservatives are absolutely out of their minds. And in a way, it's scary to watch them be so openly extreme. But simultaneously, I I'm glad that they're finally just saying the quiet part loud. So that way, there's no longer this plausible deniability. They're telling you how extreme they are. They're against contraception, abortion, marriage equality, perhaps even interracial marriage in some instances. And... They're inviting people who give Nazi speeches. So that's who they are. And I'm glad that they're embracing that. So at least Americans can make a more uh, in intelligent decision, you know, I guess. Some of them will still be hoodwinked by the GOP. Some of them will still fall for the culture war issues. But hopefully some people will wake up and realize, hmm, this is getting a little bit too much for me. They're sounding more and more fascistic. Perhaps now is the time to jump off of the ship before it takes down the entire country. That's maybe wishful thinking, but either way, that's uh, that's what we saw at CPAC. Crazy fucking shit. Up yours. Up yours. Up yours. Sons of bitches. 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 Woke moralists. Woke moralists. Woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. way. Genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.